You're listening to Leadership Powered by Common Sense with your host, Doug Thorpe. Here's Doug. Well, hello again, everyone. You're listening to another episode of Leadership Powered by Common Sense. I'm your host and tour guide, Doug Thorpe. Today, I'm going to bring you a topic that for some of you, quite honestly, uh, you're you're maybe going to be shocked by this or surprised because we haven't ever done it before on the show. But I was fascinated by the idea when I was introduced to my guest and we had a great talk in the early going. We've we've already had a, a reconnect moment here in the green room, so we're ready to launch. His name is Liam Brown. Liam, welcome to the show. Hi, Doug. Thanks for having me. And what I'm excited about, Liam is a is a gentleman who's got a business and experience in the world of esports and gaming. And for any of you that have maybe participated in the esports world, I uh, I myself am am not very far into that world. I think technically, and Liam, correct me if I'm going to say this wrong. Uh, I've done some fantasy football and some fantasy league stuff, and uh, that's probably as deep as I've gotten into that realm. Is that is that part of the package? Is that part of the spectrum? Yeah, you know, um, we kind of look at everybody as a certain degree of like a, a gamer or someone who is involved in our space and fantasy or fan, fantasy sports and things like that. That is like to me like that's part of this whole space to some degree right now it it's it's gaming in a different way in a different way but to to me you're still part of the space you know it you you have to organize under several people a lot of the communication and the data measurements are electronically and you know i'd qualify you guys uh you know under our umbrella so yeah you're you're pretty much in our in my space so well i appreciate that and it uh it was a this happened uh, not to digress here, but this happened to me a, a number of years ago. My middle son showed up as commissioner of a couple of leagues through his mm-hmm. work, and he convinced our extended family to get involved. So we had uncles and cousins and nephews and you know everybody involved in it. And 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 uh, I admit it was the guys for most of the time, and then finally a couple of the ladies jumped in and wanted they were curious, wanted to get involved. But uh, yeah. You know, really the competition, but it was a lot of fun. Exactly. Yeah. And it's and it's fun. You know, like these sources of sources of entertainment, they don't really restrict. They the only thing that they really restrict off of is is knowledge of the space or knowledge of the sport and player base and you know, records of of the teams and, and that's what's cool about different types of competitive entertainment. And that's one of the things that, you know, we emulate as well. So yeah. Well, so let's do two things. Let, let's uh, lay the right framework here for exactly what we're talking about. And I'm, I'm going to ask for a very basic question. My show's called Leadership Powered by Common Sense. I'm going to ask for a real commonsensical kind of answer. What exactly is considered gaming in today's terms? Yeah, so my field specializes specifically in the competitive field of gaming so when when i say gaming i i mean specifically playing video games professionally and competitively against other people whether in team-based or single player um and this kind of field has has really been around since the arcade game era you could argue uh, because people would compete in that level but but now because of the technology that's available and also the because it's such an accessible form of entertainment we've we've been able to grow so the most basic level way to answer your question is that esports is the competitive level of video games okay so when we hear the phrase esport it's not limited to the literal sport games like i think about madden football or nba or the big show baseball Mm -hmm. and all those kind of programs exactly and and i couldn't put it better you know it a lot of people will view it as because of the sports part of uh, the majority of that word you know people automatically think of of like the maddens and the nhls and um you know in reality a larger amount of the fan base is tied towards other titles such as the competitive scene for call of duty valorant uh apex legends these kinds of these kinds of titles yeah 
Yeah. So, and, and that's where I was going. The, you know, the, the, the gaming platforms that get into, you know, uh, war games or I think of, uh, oh my goodness, I just drew a blank. What, what's the, uh, Grand Theft Auto, you know, those, those yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, one thing that's cool about like Grand Theft Auto is that it's just become this crazy, just money making machine. You know, the, the game, the, the game, series has been around forever but the game title of like gta 5 and they people have been replaying it for 10 years you know and and there's so much like sandbox ability with a game like that everyone's able to make games in that game whether they want to go racing or they want to you know rob banks and there's a time limit there there's so many things you can do in in like a gaming title such as that so it's interesting it's interesting you bring up that point because that's kind of become its own ecosystem you know you know yeah well, and, and uh, just uh, now that I've got the right gears in my own mind percolating, uh, wh what about these um, uh, fantasy or uh, alter uh, uh, living? Uh, and I'm uh, again, I'm drawing some blanks on the titles, but these uh, Second Life or you know those kind of platforms hmm. where people take on personas in a in a cyber world and you, oh you build, right build houses and build communities and mm -hmm. go get jobs and do things and trade and barter and all of that is that yeah you know that's loosely identified as the the metaverse i think you might be referring yeah, yeah, to yeah and and you look at there's a lot of different ways uh, to access those kinds of platforms and, and one of the easiest ways in my head is through a platform called discord now i don't know about you but nobody I, that I know right now is constantly living in a virtual reality headset, which is what everybody's being told. You know, in order to be in the metaverse, you have to you have to be in a virtual reality headset for like your entire days, and then that's how you can really interact with the communities. But in reality, it starts on your your phone, starts on your computer, and you're just engaging with people in different chat threads and chat groups. And then it's like, oh, okay, I have a little bit more time. Do you guys want to um, engage in a, a, an experience together virtually and electronically? So by that, I mean you guys can get to, together as a group and you can watch YouTube videos or you can play video games together, but you're all linked together on voice chat. You know, that is technically a metaverse experience. And then you talk about, like, people gaining jobs and taking on different roles. That is still there. There's a lot of people perhaps even selling digital real estate. And then, you know, even people that are selling domains uh, that pe other people can pay to have access to. You know, it, it the metaverse it is just like a it's a larger extension of kind of my field as well like we have a lot of we have a lot of play in that simply because discord is a so it's a it's a social media platform that is primarily the largest audience base and it is uh my fan base the like gamers and it is the most easily accessible and advanced metaverse experience out there so yeah i think that that's kind of how i'd, I'd want to respond to something like that just because like the meta the it's it's such an interesting field, and I always tell people like there's never a dull moment uh, in my day to day just because I'm constantly interacting with like these new things every day. So so yeah, that's yeah. 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 So how is it that somebody could if if they're running a business and they're trying to interact with a certain demographic, how can they begin the process of leveraging the power of the, the esports gaming and all of that that mm -hmm. is wrapped into that? How do you leverage that to actually attract or appeal to people? I mean, is it yeah. old fashioned advertising posts or yeah. what, what ends up happening? No, that's a, that's a really good, that's a really good question. And and the audience group that I mainly mm -hmm. represent is going to be that 18 to 35 high income cord cutting ad blocking uh, audience group that only wants to interact with different products and services that truly impact them uh, in, in an authentic way. So we, we talk about like traditional advertising, perhaps on, you know, let, let's take like football games, you know, the, the advertising on their 
is targeted towards the viewer, but it only is taking on perhaps 8% of their actual attention. Most of the time they're looking at something else, they're discuss they're talking with other people that are viewing the, the same entertainment, or they're on their phone. And with, with gaming, it's, their attention is really locked in with something that they enjoy. It's their, one of their favorite pastimes. And the if if brands would like to get into this space, I'm biased, I would just say work with us. But if brands are looking to get into a space like this, you need to look at it as you need to integrate into every level of the experience. So what do I mean by that? A lot of people will look at getting involved in esports as just sponsoring a tournament or sponsoring an event. And then they'll just take their logo, put it everywhere, and they'll just kind of Hope do that model and kind of hope for the best. Yeah, they, they won't yeah. put any data measurement. They won't utilize any specific hashtags that have measurable results from engagement and impressions. Uh, so a, a good way to look at esports is this way. How can we build the space so that people identify us with their interest and us with, their, with gaming? So it's an, a combination of influencers content the uh the events and the leagues and then making sure that you're doing a lot of that at the same time so that you're integrating at every level of the overall gaming and esports experience so that people associate you with one of their best interests and then from there you can start to identify okay well we're going to create um measurable links in the form of you know click on this link for a unique discount that only you guys have access to and then we're going to utilize different hashtags through the course of this campaign so that we can measure the you know we can measure a lot all of the social activity around this campaign it's like because it's a test and learn for us we're new to this and then from there you know a lot of esports organizations live in data already so you give them clear instructions as to how you want this campaign measured, just like you would do with any other campaign if you're looking to put marketing spend towards it. And that's that's kind of how I would go into this space for the first time and also kind of measure the success of that campaign as well. Fascinating. And uh, maybe this isn't a, a correct interpretation, but part of what I'm hearing is that when you talked about entering it at multiple levels, mm -hmm. uh, what flashed through my mind is is the age old traditional sales funnel design. You know, mm -hmm. when, a, when a company thinks about a traditional marketing campaign, you, you think about the classic sales funnel and you say, well, level one, how do we attract people to even come? I'm into the funnel, and then once they're in the funnel, what do we ask them to do? Yeah. Where do we send them? Where do they go? So on and so on. And there's however many levels might be applicable. Uh, I mean, is that the same kind of stuff you're talking about on entering at different levels and presence and all? Yeah, I think I think you put it in a you put that in a really good terms. And the only difference is that entering the funnel and keeping people in the funnel. If for my audience is a lot more difficult just because their attention is going to be on something else and you want to make sure that you're attracting and keeping their attention and th i think that's that's probably how i put it getting people into the funnel in the first place it going into like esports and gaming is a little bit more difficult because a lot of brands will view this as entertainment comparable to traditional sports and marketing in traditional sports is going to be a sponsorship in the form of your logo and your advertisements being played during the whatever 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 form it is like during the commercial breaks and then your logo on the ban banners surrounding the arena and also perhaps even your logo on like the jerseys themselves and and that's one small facet of of, of esports sponsorship that is it when targeted into an effective approach but a lot of brands will view that as the be all end all and they'll say hey okay well we didn't we didn't see a certain roi measurable on this event sponsorship or or, or something that we just threw money at so we're not going to invest in this further when they didn't take a step back to really view how to contact this audience because they don't want to see those commercial ad breaks. They don't want to see those kinds of things in their entertainment, and they want to get back to the things that they enjoy. So right. how do you 
lock yourself in with the things that they enjoy. And, and that's something that I do every day uh, with, the, with the different brands that I talk to. I have to paint the story of how we're going to attach your brand and your, your services to their, their favorite um, pastime. And what are some of the ways those attachments get made? Mm -hmm. So w one thing that we're going to look at is the age, the, the age of your target market. So we're going to look at who, what are your specific goals and whether it's an awareness play, conversions. And then from there, we're going to lock in what game, perhaps what gaming titles that we want to focus in on and what segmentation in each of these things that we want to look at. So let's say, for example, this product or service is going to be going after the hardcore of the hardcore esports fans that are, you know, constantly buying the latest and greatest PC um, and, and like the the like the best monitors and stuff like that. You know, it's a, it's it's an out there example. So from there, what I would do is I'm like, okay, so I'm going to target all of the circles that those people are going to be gravitating towards, and for for me, I would look at okay, I, I want to place you across these events but also these leagues and it from there integrate you into the content in those leagues as well as the content with the influencers that we're going to be doing as well as the different competitive events and championship events at the end of the season and the also the different conventions that are going to be a part of that then throughout the entirety of that campaign those big events and those big uh those big championships are going to be larger checkpoints but throughout the entirety of it we're going to be doing integrated content with different influencers that perhaps we have under our belt so that this audience is constantly getting that messaging when they go to view content in this game title, like Valorant or Apex Legends, and then when they see it at the grassroots level in the content that they watch, and they have a unique, you know, discount or unique call to action that they're constantly being given in um, it, that fits into the content and fits into the events that they can interact with, then when they they'll receive shout outs during the stream because they interacted with the call to action. And then also they'll be able to receive some sort of dopamine hit throughout the entirety of the campaign. So that they're willing to interact with that product and services uh, throughout. So then when it comes time for purchasing or converting on that service, that brand is going to be top of mind to the con to that consumer, you know, right when they go to make that purchasing decision. Um, that, that, does that kind of answer your question? That's a, that's a bit generalized, but, oh, oh you're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, yeah, I, th I think that does. And I guess related to that is the classic notion of, uh, you know, in movies, people talk about product placement to mm -hmm. be able to, you know, uh, drop a lead or, or drop something in and, um, um, you know, that's a popular thing, but that's not exactly what we're talking about here, right? Because your brand or your logo is not going to show up in a action stream on Valor or Call of Duty, right? It's Now, depending on, depending on what event you're looking at and depending on who's organizing the, the, that event, sometimes the brand messaging can be put, can be coded into the celebration so like those big touchdown moments now that's dependent on who you're talking to you know not everybody has the ability to do that um my team we're one of the only esports teams in the world to have our own live events and leagues arm of our organization so that's something that we do um so that people will regularly associate that with the brands that we're representing um but the product placement that is going to be consistent in every form of competitive entertainment or whenever influencers are at play. And again, we talk about telling the story. How are you going to be incorporating that product or service into the content piece in, in, a re, in an authentic way so that it's part of the story as opposed to just having a sponsor segment in the middle of the video saying, hey, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor here. I think a lot of people have seen that and a lot of people will just skip that segment as opposed to even interact with it in the first place. So, right. um, yeah, I, I think that it's more than just events or more than just product placement. It's an, it's an amalgamation of how do you, at every level of the experience, do it. And, and it's just a combination of a lot of different factors purely dependent on what that brand's goals are when they go into trying to contact 
the again 18 to 35 high income hard to reach audience that is going to convert based off of the creative solutions that we present to them i was just speaking with a gentleman who will be a future guest on my show and we were talking about the I'll I'll fly back up maybe to what I'll call 20,000 feet. So when you think about marketing in, in today's world, usually what is always somewhere in the discussion is the notion of how do I show up on Google? Because mm -hmm. you, you want to, that's what search engine optimization is all about. You want to have the right placement, but more importantly, you want to have the right story being reflected. Because if you say your brand is about X, Y, and Z values in the marketplace, but for whatever reason, Google doesn't pick it up that way, yeah. and none of those keywords are associated with your brand, you've, you, you've lost the game before you get started. And yep. um, so, you know, the, the part of the discussion we were having is that whole point of knowing where to target and how to convey that message. And mm -hmm. so where, where does that enter into this um, option and solution you're talking about? I think that the search, so, so when we talk about like SEO, it's changed a lot, um, especially recently, because I remember like when I was in university and I would take play, take part in in classes and, and marketing 101, how is SEO fit into the whole matrix? Um, I, I think it's changed a lot simply because Google has become a lot more advertiser friendly. And also search habits have changed a lot because I believe it's like 45% of uh, searches are long form. So it's not just going to be those shorter keywords that you might be bidding on on Google AdWords, but it's gonna be those longer ones as they pertain. And then from there, it's a simple, it's like kind of, it kind of is simplified to, okay, making sure that the right terminology and talking points are consistent throughout the entirety of the campaign, whether we're choosing the same kinds of messaging when describing that product or service so that when people look for, man, what was that? What was the name of that product or what was the name of that, that thing again? Okay. Well, I remember it was, they were describing it with these words and then you make sure that you're bidding on those descriptive words or those sentences that you understand that a high majority of people are going to be looking up this keyword phrase when they're looking for your product or service. And then it's more honing in and again, building that funnel from there. So again, that, that's like a, that's another part of, of the campaign that, that we will engage with sponsors on their side. So uh, it, whenever we go into these kinds of conversations, it's always a partnership versus just one-sided. So what kind of work are you going to be doing on your side so that when we send uh, willing customers or, or qualified leads over to your side, how are you capturing them and putting them into your funnel? And that's one of the ways that a lot of brands can participate and really um, it, and, and really drive conversions and awareness during the campaign when they're going into esports. What can they do in their, uh, when, when they recruit these kinds of esports and gaming-related talent to send them to, to, to their services and, and their products. And, and one of those ways is through, you know, SEO op optimization, but in, in very specific ways. So that, that's kind of how I would say that that fits into the whole matrix of that. Yeah. Well, uh, so, so what's going through my mind and, and, and the other element that we were talking about this gentleman and I earlier is, is the idea that, Companies may do a pretty good job of really honing in on who their ideal prospect may be mm -hmm. or or even their you know current customer base, but then trying to figure out where these folks live you know mm -hmm. and, and or, or operate where do, and, and so what you're saying is you've got a population that is they are eSport gaming enthusiasts, and so they're there. And how, how do you start doing some of that segmentation of um, who is the the 28-year-old that owns his own business versus, no disrespect to anybody, but versus the 28-year-old who had a little bit of a failure to launch, he's still living on his dad's couch, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how do you differentiate some of that? Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is up to the services 
that we utilize to find where product spend or or where ad spend is going to be going from some of our targets and we see if if we see that people are targeting their spend towards our demographic or their looking after this a whole audience segment that we represent that's one of the we'll reach out to them and and see where and how our can like this campaign can align and how some of our our um our efforts can align but i think a lot of it also boils down to seeing what the consumer trends are going to be and seeing how we can get behind those trends from from our side and and perhaps even go along to create trends with with certain brands so i think to answer your question it's it's looking and and seeing and then taking notes off of what commonalities exist that that we view i, th I think that's probably the, the the best way to the best basic way i can answer your question right okay yeah, yeah. So what if I can translate and feedback and please collect, uh, correct me if I don't say this cr properly, but uh, so your agency has kind of already done some stratification. You already know how to define some of the optimum customer targets in this age band. And, and that is essentially what you're offering up to people who want to promote their own brand to that audience. Yeah, and and I think I'd go a step further, and I wouldn't really qualify us as an agency. Uh, I I would really just view us as you you know you look at you look at some of these organizations that label themselves as an investment group or or something along those lines. I qualify us as an esports group because my organization were three companies under one umbrella, and. We're, we've been able to do a lot with a very small team and we participate from the competitive side, influencer and content. We run entire events and run entire leagues on behalf of um, gaming developers. And we're also a tech developer. So the ability that we have, it, it allows brands to integrate into this new audience group or this new entertainment platform at every level of the experience from the grassroots level to the content, to the talent that is competing, to to um, to to like the larger events and leagues, and it's what we've de what we've developed is a very unique white glove approach to the esports and gaming solution that a lot of these brands don't even know that they have a problem for. They just want to diversify a lot of their outreach to our our fan base, and we can help in a very. And again, I, I everybody always says unique, but it's the only really the only word that I can utilize to to really describe kind of the things that we've been able to develop. Well, it sounds like part of the challenge is the ever present reality that social media as we originally knew it is in many respects falling out of favor. I mean, people don't use Facebook, LinkedIn, even Instagram like they used to, or, mm -hmm. or when it first came out, people have wildly varied opinions and I was sharing, again, with this discussion I had earlier, that I pulled my own business advisor clients last year, and I said, just curious, can you describe to me your social media practices? Is, mm -hmm. is, is there a go-to platform that you follow? You know, if, if you scroll on your phone, where, where, are you, where do you start? Where do you go? And... Mm -hmm unilaterally everybody said i don't do any of that anymore i'm, I'm tired of it i, I just don't that it doesn't catch my interest i don't have enough time in the day i'm i'm tired of it mm -hmm. and you know for a business that's thinking oh i'll go dominate facebook or i'll go dominate instagram or even linkedin it's like mm, it may not be working like you heard it used to yeah no i i completely agree you know and and sometimes it's best to hone in on on one service for a time being. You know, I, I sometimes I, I gravitate towards like Major League Soccer when primarily on Apple TV and their streaming and their streaming services, so that they had a very consistent viewership and a very consistent audience base that they were directly able to get in line with right to their TVs, as opposed to being held hostage to like network and network negotiation. I've seen some. 
uh, businesses outside of gaming and esports thrive on certain platforms and perhaps even hone in on just singular platforms. But for us, it, it really wouldn't work for something like that, you know, like we're like, just like you were saying, people don't use these platforms like they used to. Some people might go to Instagram or TikTok specifically for product research because they saw different sponsored segments from creators that they follow. And then they'll close the app immediately after they find what they're looking for and, and go on to, to a different search engine, such as, you know, Google or brave and it's when looking for those that that's how you need to integrate into as we were talking about a lot of many different levels of this so that you not only you appear but you provide the solution for those people when they're looking to for perhaps escapism or entertainment or you know just looking to take their mind off of something and i i think it's important to diversify in a calculated manner and that that's probably something that I would recommend to people who are who are looking to perhaps, you know, as you were saying, dominate social media in, in a different way. I, I'd say, you know, there there's still so many like let's take for instance like small businesses like an ice cream shop or our or, or like a barber shop that just started their Instagram account or something like that. And then or they just start they just took hold of their Google My Business account and now they own the domain when it is when their business is searched up on google maps and they're still trying to figure out how to edit the hours so that they appear in those search results right so that it's like right. there's so many people just getting into this but then there's so many titans in the space that have just had this down since day one so yeah. I, I mean you know i like to think that we have we've got like a firm holding in in not only as an organization but also as as an organization that exists in an industry in its let's face it in its infancy state in yeah. infancy state you know yeah well, there's still definitely some pockets of opportunity out there so i don't want to cast disparaging words toward anybody about their platform usage I, yeah. i've got a client right now he owns um he's a commercial real estate investor but he happens to own a, a coffee shop that mm. he's he, he opened up pre-pandemic and it it's done well, it's survived, but one of the things he and his wife are doing right now, they have their own Instagram channel and a little mm -hmm. show they run on their, uh, uh, you know, video show. <clears throat> and they release, I think, two episodes a week, maybe. And um, just in the community, they build up a following. They got 20,000 views of their videos every time they post. I mean, they've got a real following that yeah. is, is loving it. And it translates his numbers in the coffee shop show it yeah and and with with some content like that you might even want to look at the not just the views themselves but perhaps the engagement rate which can be comparable to comments likes views in 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 relation to yeah. your following you know because yeah. because we all know if, if somebody somebody might have a million followers but that doesn't mean that they're getting a million likes a million comments and a million views on every single one of their videos so i i myself i i i think that more many people would prefer to have a highly engaged audience that may be smaller versus a larger following that kind of views but is just kind of there to follow you Right. And, and I think it's more, impo more important to focus on my, my first example of the highly engaged audience like when going into campaigns. And, and that's something that, that that's something that, uh, that we represent. The, the eSports and gaming audience is highly engaged with, with, with the different brands that must, uh, latch themselves onto their interests. So yeah, yeah. So. Well, Liam, this has been great. Uh, tell everybody the best way to get a hold of you if, if they're uh, excited and encouraged about what you've shared here today. Yeah, I think uh, you, uh, easiest way to find me is just Liam Brown Knights on LinkedIn. I'm the only guy that I'm the only person that shows up. Um, and also, if you want to reach our organization, knights.gg. Uh, it's it's the easiest way to get in contact with uh, there because we have all of our social media accounts. And uh, as far as some cool stuff that we have in the pipeline, we're going to be hosting Knights Forge this September. It's going to be the very first. We were talking about Valorant. It's going to be the very first in-person Valorant tournament in all of North America. So it's going to be it's going to be huge. We're going to have a bunch of teams flying out to compete on our on on the stage, and um, it's going to be four days long. I'll be there every day. So if you guys want to come down, I'll I'll be there. But um, yeah, that that's probably the easiest way. 
you know, me awesome. on LinkedIn, the website, and then we got some cool stuff. Right. Where's that going to happen? Yeah, it's going to be happening here in Pittsburgh. If you go on our website, you can find all the information right there. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Cool. Well, very good. And, and again, thank you for kind of uh, opening our eyes on some other opportunities that people may have. And it is an emerging, uh, a powerfully dedicated audience that uh, participates in the esport gaming world. And yeah. I, I encourage people to think about it if you're looking for something, uh, particularly for that demographic, you're, you're talking about that 18 to 35, um, you know, high performer, a high, high achiever kind of mindset. It's a good yeah. place to go. Yeah. So yeah. Good. I mean, and of course I'm, I'm biased because this is the audience I represent and, and this is the field I work in, but um, you know, I, I'd, I'd love the opportunity to, talk to anybody about this field or even convince anybody of this field you know so yeah yeah, yeah. well you've, you've you've done a great job i've, I've i'm sold <laughs> I, I, I think it's uh it's an interesting idea but i occasionally call myself a, a millennial trapped in a boomer body so that's that's another story for another day but there you uh, go uh, hey listen if you ever want me back on i'd love to discuss that with you yeah <laughs> yeah right. i'd love to yeah well sounds good well, all right, Liam, thank you again. I really appreciate you sitting in with us. And with that, folks, uh, I am going to remind you, we've got all those links that Liam described. They'll be in the show notes. Just click down below uh, your episode here. You'll get that information, be able to hot link over to where he is. And I do like to remind everybody, if you're listening on your favorite streaming channel, we've got a video version over on YouTube, channel by the same name, Leadership Powered by Common Sense. Hop over there. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want to do. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Uh, you can uh, share your ideas and let us know how we're doing. And if you've got recommendations for other great ideas like this one, drop me a line. Let me know that too. So with that, I'm going to sign off, say goodbye. Go out there and make it a great day. You've been listening to Leadership Powered by Common Sense, hosted by Doug Thorpe. If you would like to know more about the coaching and advisory services he provides, visit DougThorpe.com.